top. They ain't none of y'all stopping me. Used to say I never get a ring, Charles Barkley. Now I got a wife, got kids, own property. Bubble eye beans that look like that be watching me. Okay, I lied about the beans, but that was hard though. I'm still in that black act, but she starred though. Cause that's all it takes. Oh, don't flash it for I'm on my grind, not no more fashion show. Alright, and then what questions you got for me? Um so I guess my first question, which is the one that uh, I had added to um, your calendar link, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep. But the I and guess I one of my questions was like, how do I? I know this is kind of like a question you already answered as far as like how to get like clients. Um, mm -hmm. You usually say, like you can hire like cold callers, or I could just use your program with, you know, um, buying leads. But right. how do you? Other than that, like, how do you actually get clients? Like, um, besides cold calling and you know sending out mailers or advertisement, but it's like other maybe different ways that I can use that. Uh, I guess a lot of people aren't using. I mean, that's really it. I mean, outside of that, those things going door to door, uh, buying leads. But I mean, it's really that. It's just more so. Like I tell everybody, it's just more so a numbers game. And it's like, so if if it seems like it's not working for you chances are you're probably just not doing enough of the numbers so it's like if you know that you've been cold calling and you try you know 10 today and then maybe 10 more next week you got to do more numbers so it's like i'm not sure if you're already doing it or not but i would definitely if you have the time set out you know at least one hour a day where you're going to cold call non-stop for one hour a day monday through friday and within that one hour try to get at least you know 20 buildings called out of them 20 and then do that for five days a week that'll be 100 buildings called a week and uh, and that'll at least 400 a month if you do that every single day monday through friday and so out of those 400 you should be able to at least get you know four walkthroughs scheduled and at least close on one of those every single month so that's really what it is it's just the taking the time out to do that part so if you were honest with yourself like what would you say have you been done so far consistently because i i did once upon a time had cold callers but mm -hmm. i had because I started, um, you know, yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't making any money in my business anymore. Yeah. I lost like all my contracts, so I had to go back to like working my nine to five. And right. um, it really, I haven't really, to be honest with you, I haven't really been doing anything consistently. Um, yeah. A lot of my contracts or a lot of my calls are just they just come through to me because of Google mm -hmm. or um, mostly just Google or they visit my website. Right. And that's good. So at least you do got that going. But the truth of the matter is, if like if you're going to really grow consistently, you got to have some type of out sales outreach program. So it's like that's inbound sales where they contact you. But you got to have something set up to where you're actually reaching out, you know, to the customer. So it ain't got to be cold calling. It could be cold email. And so if you want to do cold email, you can use a website called uh, D7 Lead Finder. You can use that website to get a list of emails to uh, cold email to. So you can try that way. You can, like I said, you can also go door to door. But I mean, there's no way around it. You're going to have to get out. Like you got to put those numbers in, whether it's on the phone, whether it's on the email, whether it's door to door or whether you buy leads from some company. But you can't get around that part. I know <laughs> it seemed easy when you watch those interviews. Right. And everybody making these 20,000, 40,000, whatever thousand they're making a month. But it, it really is just you got to put the work in. Ain't no magic pill around it to get contract. If it was, I, you know, I mean, everybody be doing it. Right, right, right. So as far as like the emailing, do you have like a team that does that for you? Like the code emails? Cause I've tried them before. Um, I believe I have MailChimp and it shows, you know, like who's actually opening the emails and you know, who's yeah. like unsubscribing. So like, what have you been using that, you know, for sure um, is going to get your emails at least open. Yep. So the first thing I will recommend is not doing email marketing so to speak so when you say mailchimp you probably send in you know bulk emails and you're trying to send them all at once to that one same template email to every company at once that doesn't work so instead what you have to do is literally go one by one by one and cold and cold email them just like how you will on a phone call or a door to door because you get a way better result that way so that would be my first step but for full transparency i, I don't do use cold email my callers have done it like rarely in the past when they cold call somebody and they'll be like can you email so and so instead Cause, and then they'll email and then get it that way but typically we do straight cold calls and that's what works for us but i do know that when i spoke to uh 
the route, the guy, not route, but uh, what's their cleaning company name? Uh, Regalado, whatever it's called, Rosalado Services, and they got a multi million dollar company up in Chicago. And I asked him about the cold email, and he said, Never do the math marketing emails, it's, you got to do one by one, or else it'll never work. Gotcha, okay, yeah, that definitely makes sense. So, my next question is, like I said, I um, my business has slowed down, so I have been working like a nine to five and kind of doing my business, um, you know, when I, when I'm not working. And at first I did have like an assistant and I had, you know, all these type of people working behind me in a way I, I'm trying to work on like my micromanaging. I, I don't want to say I'm a micromanager. Right. I do like to give people that freedom to do what they, you know, to do their job. Cause that's what you hired them to do. Right. Um, so I guess my question is, what are some things that you don't delegate that you feel like you have to take care of yourself? And what are some things that you feel like this could definitely be delegated? I don't need to do this, you know, myself. I think, I think, so the, you don't really have to, all right, let me put it this way. Everything can be delegated. All right. And that's the goal because that's how you scale. But I think when you, when you first starting off and you don't really have the clientele, you don't, the only thing that you should, you should be delegating is the stuff that you don't want to do, basically. And typically, the, the number one thing you don't want to do is clean. So that's the first thing we're going to delegate to clean. Then the next thing would be cold, like outbound sales. Like right now, you you don't really want a cold caller. You don't really want to do that. So that would probably be the second thing I would delegate would be that part, the cold caller. But starting off, the cleaning will be number one. And then second will be the, the cold outreach. Because the whole point is, you're trying to make your business not feel so much like a job, right? So much like work. So for me, my from my experience, the best thing to do is just delegate in the order of what you don't want to do. So you can focus on the things that you do want to do and grow the business faster. Gotcha. But gotcha. yeah, but long term, everything is going to get delegated. We got to. Right. That makes sense. Because uh, like I said, I had that I, I had that experience in my business where I was delegating all those things. I was delegating the cleaning, I was delegating right. the sales. I was delegating like the onboarding process, like everything was delegated to the point where I kind of was like, well, I really don't know what to do. So <laughs> right. like, I want to like do something here and there just to feel busy, you know, because yeah. sometimes I did kind of, and maybe that is a reason why my business did kind of like um, come back to this stage is yeah. because I was, I didn't have nothing to do anymore. So I right. kind of got comfortable and bored and, uh, so yeah, I'm just kind of like trying to start back up, and um, so I, so I guess that's a question too. Like, what do you do when you feel like there's nothing really left to do? If that makes yeah. sense, I'm pretty sure some businesses don't wait, but that's yeah. something I experienced. No, that's a great that's a great question, and it's two things that come to mind. The number one is you fix what's already being done, right? So systems. So it's like okay, well, you weren't doing the cleaning. But could the cleaning have been done better? So maybe you should have been doing inspections yourself and, you know, looking to see what you can catch before the customer can catch it. So that's one thing, inspections and just making sure that your operations are, are good. Same thing with your cold callers. Do you have a recording software? Are you listening to the cold calls and, you know, like giving them training to see how they can improve and get better with the cold calling? So that'll be the first thing is fix the eviction system, something that I'm really trying to work on myself this year because I needed to do that for a while. And then the second thing, in addition to fixing your current operations, but also sales. So like, okay, maybe you you got a cold call that's doing cold outreach for you, but okay, well maybe you ain't gonna cold call, but maybe you can join, uh, you know, the chamber of commerce in your area. Maybe you can get out here, go to networking events, and start, you know, rubbing elbows with some of these these bigger owner companies where you can get their business now, and you can do sales in that way. Where it's still kind of fun, you get to dress up and go do your business stuff. But you're also still selling because you're building these relationships and eventually you know the owner of that that company over there might need somebody to clean their business over there so that's what i would be doing is focusing on you know growing the company reinvesting in education trying to you know learn more to scale faster and just getting out there networking and all of that stuff and then just fixing the, the, the system that you already have gotcha gotcha um okay so i kind of want to change gears onto something that happened um in my business a while ago and this was um with people that were like stealing. So what are your procedures when it comes to people that, that take from your um, your, your uh, contracts? First thing I do is I try to get it back. That's the easiest route is to try to get it back. Just call them and be straight up with them. I do embellish a little bit and I say, we already prepared, well, well, they already prepared. The thing, well, this is the thing too. Um, I had a large group of people. So I wasn't sure okay. who was doing 
So like, what steps do I like? What like the first step is like first figuring out who did it, right? Right. Um, so like, I guess those are like those are the questions that I'm asking. Like, how do I go by the steps? Like, what type of stuff should I take to figure it out? And then you know, what happens after that? Well, do you so all of them were there at the same time? Yeah, all of them worked there at the same time. Um, okay. And the thing also was they all kind of knew each other previously. So mm-hmm. they were kind of like, you know, watching each other's back. Like one person, you know, they, they, they were protecting each other in so many words. So it was right. you know, really hard figuring out, you know, who's being truthful and who isn't. Right. So in that case, what I would do is I would send a group text message out to all of them at one time because while they won't, they won't, they likely ain't nobody's going to snitch when they all together. But they yeah. probably definitely might do it to the side. So I will send one mass group text message all together and just explain to them, listen, so-and-so was missing. We already know that it, that it happened when our company was there. So what we need for you to do now is just please return it because they are threatening to press full charges against not only me and the company, but to all individuals who were there individually as well. And so you make it sound like an extra huge deal, like they're going to get locked up. So, right? so that's the first thing. And then let them just be like listen if you can come clean now i may be able to talk them into not pressing charges and all of that but i need y'all to really like just be honest with me that you don't have to reply back in this group message but if you can just contact me one-on-one i really really need you to do this because so i will start there then once we can get to that point if somebody can speak one-on-one to you then go ahead and let, I mean, just get the thing back from the person, be cordial as possible till you get whatever they took back and then return it. After that, that person is fired. Now, if nobody fesses up, everybody's fired, and then you just got to pay and replace the item that was stolen. Or if it was a super expensive item, then hopefully you got bond coverage and you can file a claim with your bond uh, company and they'll replace it for you. Okay, because I kind of I kind of started it the way that you said it. I actually had like a group meeting and I mm-hmm. was like, I said that I was like, well, I didn't say anything about you know the press of charges. I, I wish I would have said that. Maybe that would have yeah. made <laughs> that would have made. Yeah, you got scared the hell out of them. <laughs> yeah, but I tell them like, hey, you know, like you know, things were taken. Here's my personal number. If anybody knows something, you know, definitely let me know what's going on. So, right. um, okay, well, I'm glad I kind of went somewhat in the right direction with that one. <laughs> um, I think we only have like a few more minutes, so I just have one more question before you know I get out of your hair. Okay. Um, so, so with the subcontracting, I know a lot of people are using other cleaning services to help subcontract their um, their buildings, and I know there's a lot of stipulations that come with that. How does it work when a contract needs people to be there at a certain time and they need them to be there every day? Is there a way you can like work around that with subcontractors, or how does that really play out? Yeah, so. Does, are they requiring you to leave at a particular time too? Yes. Okay. But so all you would do, the answer was still the same, but I was just wondering if it was, but anyway, you put it inside the subcontractor agreement. So you had them sign a subcontractor agreement and then have them, and really, so I would make one for each location that you put them in, a whole new subcontractor agreement for each location, put the address on there, and then put the stipulations for that particular contract. So, and when you put, the inside of the agreement, you got to put some type of language that states, okay, per the request of the con- of the customer, you are required to be there from this time to this time according to you know the 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 scope of work for this particular client. So if you make it part of the scope of work, you still can mandate that they be there during a certain time because of, it's part of the contract. So they still it's still contracting and not an employee. Now they they're not clocking in. Are they, are they being required to clock in? Because I have uh, seen them too. Yeah, I would like to, because a lot of some some of them do require like um, getting paid by hour instead of like mm-hmm. monthly. So some people will have to clock in at a certain time. Yes. Who you send the your subcontractors are requested to be paid by the hour? No. Um. The the contract. The contract is set up. Yeah. Gotcha. So you probably subcontracted for somebody else on that. Yes. Yeah, I know exactly what you want you to talk about. That'd be like the retail stores and stuff. So in that case, again, you can still do it. You just got to put all of that in the contract and explain to them that it's a requirement of the customer, and that's in y'all contract. That would be the best way to do it. But honestly, too, 
when you go, a lot of times it ain't enough money to go around. When you go on down, if you subbing under another sub like that, or another co uh, contractor like that, and then you try to sub it again, it usually ain't enough money to go around anyway. But if you decide to do it, then you just put it inside of the subcontractor agreement, and then it becomes one, a contract requirement versus them being just an employee. But that would be the way you would get around doing it, though. Okay. And is that like, um, what about when it comes down to their pay? I know they only have to make like a certain amount every, mm -hmm. what is it, every year? So yeah. what, if, what if they're making like more than that? Like what if I'm paying them more than what they're, like the certain amount that they're legally supposed to make? I, I think you might be uh, confusing the law. So there is a law that says uh, if somebody makes up to $600 or less, then you don't, you're not required to report a 299 on them. But as far as like them making a certain amount of the contractor, there's no stipulations at all. They can make as much as whatever. There's no limit on. Them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right. I definitely got that confused. Yeah. And then I will say that when it comes to W two employees, there is a stipulation. Some states, I believe, a state as a state thing, not a national thing. But some states, if you go past a certain amount of hours, I think it's like twenty hours or something, then they got to be moved. Either you got to require you you're required to provide them with certain benefits, and then they get like a, a thirty hours or more, thirty five hours or more. Then you require to treat them as a full time employee and get them benefits. So it's like that yeah, that's that law, but that's for employees and not for contractors, though. Okay, well, um, yeah, I mean that was definitely a lot to take in, but I'm glad I finally got those questions. <laughs> All right, uh, those were some things that you know I've been you know thinking about. I'm glad I was able to get you know. Um, your response to those okay and and i'm glad you was able to get me jazz and i just want to make sure I, I reiterate this one before we go because i feel like this was your biggest one which was finding more customers and i just want you to remember one think about how you got the first ones too don't for whatever you did to get the first contract you did go do more of that and just multiply the efforts on that but then two remember what i said i mean this the time that we've been sitting here you probably could have made you know at least 10 phone calls so yeah. Just dedicate, really dedicate 30 minutes to an hour, Monday through Friday on your lunch break or whenever you got to do it. And just really lock in on business by business by business. I don't care how many people say no, but the more you do it, the more people, the more the closer you're going to get to that next year. So just really lock in on try to do at least 20 of those Monday through Friday. I guarantee you, you have a customer before within the next 30 days. Okay. Okay. I love that. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yep. No problem, Jasmine. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Listen, every single year I host the biggest celebration of the cleaning industry, and that's the Clean Biz Network Conference, y'all. And get ready. Get your tickets ASAP before time runs out. Go to www.cbnconference.com and meet me there. We're going to be in Las Vegas, y'all. Las Vegas at the JW Marriott Hotel. Get your tickets. You do not want to miss this event. Every single year it gets bigger and better. The dates are February 28th through March 1st, 2024. And this year, and we got a special guest hosting, y'all. This next conference that will be hosted by none other than Tenacity Academy, y'all. Tenacity Clean, y'all seen them on their YouTube channel, Mrs. Johnson, Miss Tamika. They're going to kill it. They're going to bring that energy. And not only them, we also got some amazing speakers lined up for y'all. I'm talking about Mr. Eric Coffey from GovCon Giants. If you are interested in government contracts, everybody knows Eric Coffey is the man. He is the GOAT of the government contract, y'all. So you definitely want to be there to hear from him. We got Raylan Dunlap from the Hustle Network. Check out our YouTube channel. Massive, all about just hustling and getting to this money, y'all. Shout out to the Cleaning Balls family. Meet DJ The Balls at the Clean Business Network Conference. We also got Mila D. Hostkeeper, the queen of Airbnb cleaning, y'all. Miss Carolyn Arilano, y'all already know that she killing it as well in the cleaning space. The legendary Debbie Sardone, who has been the number one residential cleaning consultant for I don't know how long now. She's probably the best to ever do it in the residential cleaning space. Mr. Mario Kelly, who specializes in stadiums, y'all. If you ever wanted to know how to get those big contracts cleaning the sports stadiums and all of that, you do not want to miss this. Mario Kelly will be there. And we also have the king of client attraction, Mr. Mark Will Russell, will be in the building. You do not want to miss the event. And we have so many other great speakers as well, too many to name. Not to mention we're going to have breakout sessions. We're going to have special dinner served. It's going to be a black tie affair. 
We're going to give out awards. I'm telling you, it's going to be so big. Live DJs, you do not want to miss this event. Go to www.cbnconference.com. Get your tickets. Meet me there. Meet my wife. Meet my kids. We all going to be there. Let's get it, y'all.